Ice Age is always fun to make, whether it's the sequel or the original. It's just uh, Ray Romano is a very old friend of mine, as is John Leguizamo. So the idea that the three of us are interacting with um, each other in, uh, in a giant animated um, situation is just cracks me up because we all started around the same time. We all kind of knew each other when we had no money. We each do a lot of improv within the framework of what they have. So it's always interesting to come into a session and find out what John has improv or Ray has improv and then I have to improv something back at them. I just did another improv uh, thing today that they'll have to react to. You better watch it. You're kind of like popcorn to a saber tooth. I don't really identify with anybody. I just, I laugh the hardest at John uh, because that character is so funny. And I always picture him doing it, his, his face screwed up at the microphone, uh, making that voice happen. <laughs> this is a three-hander, it's, it's John, myself, and Ray, so it's finding the energy. You know, in this case, I'm in Ice Age, the movie was really based on what John came up with as the voice for the sloth, um, and that's the comic centerpiece of the film. So then around that comes, um, you know, what Ray does and, and what uh, I have to supply. In reality, it's always about John. Um, it's always about Sid, and everything revolves around him. My character was pretty easy to, to come up with because I had to play the heavy in the first one, and even in this one, it's all about him annoying me. And I've, I've been lucky because I've been a ladybug and, uh, you know, a saber-toothed tiger. So, you know, it's not bad. It's not parts I would normally get cast in. We usually don't see the movie finalized till we sit down with, you know, John's kids, Ray's kids, my kids, the various nephews and nieces that come. So it's a high pressure situation because if the kids don't laugh, then we haven't done our job. <laughs>